welcome. I'm the Deadwood Jedi. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today I'm kind of excited because we're going to test out Rugnor Gold Gleam. Specifically, we're going to be using him in the budget unkillable. Now, this is one of those champions that I think everybody's been very excited about because of the new skill prioritization. Rugnor has some really unique skills that make him very hard to speed tune. Today, we're going to be able to turn those skills off, and I'm going to be able to show how effective he can be in the budget unkillable team. In fact, I think he's maybe the best stun target out there. I know I recently put a video out saying Rowan's the best. Well, I think Rugnor's a definitely a good uh, second option, if not the number one option for this team. Now, in order to do this, I'm actually kind of planning a couple things. One, I'm going to show Rugnor now. I'm also planning on showing a couple of different Void champions in comparison. I'm going to put the exact same gear, minus the accessories, of course, but I'm going to put the exact same main gear on a bunch of different champions and compare the damage, compare how well they do, uh, so we can get kind of a good sense of, hey, who is the best for this type of a team and who should you be looking out for? Um, and I think Rugnor is going to be at the top of the list. Now, they'll all be Void Champions because, again, Void Champions make the whole process a lot easier. You don't have to build up nearly as many champions to make it work for all affinities. So, We'll start with Ragnar. We'll see how he goes. Um, I'm actually really interested. I haven't done this yet, so it might even fail. I don't really know, but I'm excited to try. Um, real quick, before we get into it, I do want to let you guys know, as always, we have links to the Soundstripe, the, where I get all the music for these videos is down below, so if you like this music, try that out. Um, definitely want to give a big shout-out to my Patreons for supporting me, and if you guys want to become a Patreon, there's links down below in the comment description of this video, not to mention on my website, which I do recommend you go check out. Um, in addition to that, uh, I do have a game on video, and I'm continuing my little clan boss series with little snippets of information. I have another one of those those videos down there so I definitely encourage you to check that out these are all things that as a veteran player you might know or you might not some things that even I didn't know beforehand so I think that's going to be really uh, advantageous a quick short videos for you guys um, and that's all we got so with that said let's check out the build of Rugnor I'll show you the entire team too so you have an idea of who we're using and then we'll try a clan boss run see what happens Okay, as said, we're going to be using Rugnor in today's team. Now, this is all Spirit Affinity. That's where my clan boss is right now. Doesn't really matter, right? We can still adjust. We're just going to try Ultra Nightmare so we have an idea of what he can do and how to use him uh, with a skill prioritization. Now, uh, you can see I have him in pretty much all attack gear. His stats are stacked. You can see 3,500 uh, attack here, uh, great crit rate, great crit damage, good accuracy, We've got HP uh, at a sufficient level. Now, the reason why he's going to work is based off of some of the other champions we're going to be bringing in. I'll come back to Ragnar in a second here. But one of the champions we're going to bring in is going to be Belenor. Now, I'm going to be able to put Belenor in the lead because Belenor has some unique skills, including a uh, Perfect Veil ability. Now, Belenor is going to be putting decreased defense and weaken as well. So Ragnar is not going to be carrying that on his own, but you should see him proccing that very consistently if everything goes right. Um, and I think he's going to be really good for this team. But because of Belenor, Belenor has a crit rate aura. So 24% crit rate aura. That means I don't have to build everybody to 100% crit rate, which means good stuff. I can really maximize their damage to really show what the potential they have. Um, in addition to Rugnor, we're going to bring in a Colt Brawler just because I wanted to bring in another champion that can do some damage. And a Colt Brawler is obviously a great option for that. Um, he's got you know good damage when he crits. He also puts up poison, so these are good things for us. Um, we kept both our HP under the threshold and over and got them high on the defense. And then the other champion I want to show, let's make sure I pick the right one here. Uh, oh, I, there he is. He's down here. I have a level 50... Um, somewhere in here, I have a level 50 Maneater. Not fully done up, but he doesn't have to be to be successful. Now, I did put him in lifesteal gear to help make sure that he heals up as much as possible and doesn't take the stun. Um, he doesn't have masteries at all, so we're not going to get any War Master, Giant Slayer proc, so it can be a little bit difficult for him to heal up, but we're really relying on Painkeeper in order to make sure the stun goes to the right spot, so I don't need that stuff on Maneater to make it work. If you're building this, though, I highly encourage it. It will help a lot. Just letting you know. Um, I also haven't done this yet. So if it fails, this might be one of the reasons why I might have to make a quick change. Um, but you can see here he's, you know, at speed 240, only 2200 HP. So really low. The first stun could be an issue. That's something we'll have to look out for. 
Um, the last champion, of course, is going to be Painkeeper. And Painkeeper, I do have the most second most HP uh, at almost 34,000, um, 220 speed, solid crit rate again with decent crit damage and defense. And then if we go back to Ragnar, I can show a little bit more. So we got the Masteries here. Um, as always, we do not have Life Drinker. It's crucial not to have Life Drinker. We don't want him healing up anything outside of Painkeeper. Uh, as far as uh, the defensive tree, we're not going to have enough HP to proc Retribution. There's no point us using that. So we're going to go down the support tree fully here. Uh, taking Sniper will just help him land his debuff. Uh, there's really no reason to do it. The one thing I can't take, though, with Rugnor, and this is really important, I cannot take Master Hexer. I don't want to extend his Leech debuff. I need it to only be on for two turns. That's really important. And actually, I don't even want him getting any counterattacks from the defensive tree either. But the leech debuff that Ragnar has will throw the stun timing off if he heals up too much. So we need to make sure that before the stun, he doesn't actually heal up from the leech. So that's really, really crucial. As always, of course, I'm going down here. I can just move myself over, actually. Uh, you can see I go down to the War Master proc um, and just avoiding Life Drinker, basically. So looking at Ragnar's skills, you can see he has a leech on his A1. This means that because we need to really time out when that happens, we can't use ally attack. We can't use counterattack. I suppose technically we could use ally attack. We just need to make sure the ally attack itself happens right after the stun, which can throw off things for Painkeeper. So in general, we're just going to say no ally attack. It's the safest way to go with that. Um, we're going to negate this A2 skill because this will throw off his timing with the turn meter boost. And then we're really going to be hoping that this A3 skill here, this Gleam of Avarice, Avarice, procs at the right time. Now, he does have this passive. This skill is going to be cooled down every time he loses 15% of his HP. That means the stun. That means the AoEs if he heals up at all. So it's going to be really important that we get the timing of this just right. And the fact that it only takes two turns is actually to our advantage here, meaning that this won't come off cooldown too early so that we can time his skills out just right. So hopefully we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, his aura is only good for Doom Tower, so that's not going to affect us. That's why we can use Belenor as the lead. So let's go ahead and give it a try here. Okay, as you can see, I've got everybody in the right skill priority here. Uh, well, I should say I have the team order set for it. So now let's set the skills. Now, everybody's got a little bit of something that we can do to modify. It. And to kind of highlight this, I want to show you the clan boss calculator first. So if you look over here at the calculator, you can see that um, I've got everything plugged in already. So the way it works for the timing, both Manny and Painkeeper are going to use their A3s right off the bat. So we can go ahead and make those the opening ones. That way, if we forget to turn off auto, hey, it's going to work for us. Um, we do need a little bit of delay here for Painkeeper's A2, so we'll go ahead and hit that A1. And because Painkeeper isn't covered against Spirit, I can actually show you guys how you adjust for Spirit as well. What you're going to do is you're going to skip this A2 here as well. You'll use the A1 and just wait till you get down here on turn count 5 to use that A2 ability. Um, it's just a little detail of how this works, but getting there, moving on. Um, in order to do this, we do need Rugnor to go first here. And we're gonna want to have Bellinor is gonna use their uh, eight. They're gonna use a prioritized skill right there because what happens is if you look down here at turn four and seven, Painkeeper resets the cooldown or like reduces it by one. What ends up happening is if skills are on three turn cooldowns, they always will get used after that because just enough turns have happened. That's always gonna where they be where they end up, even if you try to move them elsewhere. Um, and I, actually, as an example, I can show you with Bellinor here. If we uh, take his A3 skill and we just try to move it, we'll try to have a delay. You can see, even with the delay where I avoid it here on turn four, by turn seven, it's already back to being used after that cooldown happens. So what I need to do, because they actually prioritize his A2 skill, that's the decreased defense and weaken. We're going to make him prioritize his A3 skill. And by doing that, he'll A2 skill will come after that, which will happen here before the stun, which means we'll have decreased defense and weaken on the boss for both the stun, the first AoE, and then Rugnor will use his skill for the second AoE, and it should work just fine. Now, the other important thing is that Rugnor's A1, we want to happen before both AoEs, right? So that leech falls off before the stun happens. Now, on Ultra Nightmare, it's not an issue, right? Rugnor doesn't even take a turn on the stun turn. So we can have that happen pretty much wherever we want it. If we wanted Rugnor's uh, A3 ability to happen here before the AoE 1, 
we could do that. That would be just fine. Um, it doesn't matter where he places Leech because the stun is still going to go to him um, because he doesn't take an extra turn. He won't heal up after the A2 basically wipes him down. Um, and that's the point where we need to get to eventually. Up until then, it is going to be a little tricky. That Leech is going to heal everybody up, including Rugnor. So we need that A2 to really do the work, wipe him down so he becomes a preferred stun target. Um, but we'll see how this all goes here. So let me go ahead and come back and I shall show you what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and prioritize this, make that the first choice. And then we'll make this the second choice right there. For Rugnor, it's going to be, it's not, those aren't the skills we need to worry about. This one, we need to not use Gold Mad Frenzy. And then Gleam of Avarice, we want to be the first choice. Um, and then Occult Brawler, an interesting thing we can do is actually not use his A2 skill. Let's have him put up poisons every time, right? Um, Man Eater, this will be the first skill used um, and the prioritized skill. And an interesting thing we can do is ensure that he uses his Siphon ability, make it the second prioritized skill. And then Painkeeper, obviously Combat Tactics is going to be the first choice in our opening skill. Spectacular Sweep, we actually, it helps if we make it the second choice. Occasionally, Painkeeper won't use that skill if there, everybody has too much HP. So that is a way to avoid that, ensuring that Painkeeper uses their skill when we want. We do just have to manual it, so that's going to be important to remember. Okay, so that's the team. Let's go ahead and we'll try and run it and see what happens. I, I honestly don't know, guys. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm as curious as you as to what will happen here. So let's jump in. Whenever the game wants to let us jump in. Or maybe not at all. Just, just going to hang out for a little bit. I wonder if it's reset time. Not quite. Today, 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 tomorrow. Okay. Let's try this again. Uh, now that we can get into the clan boss and see how we do. All right. So we got the auto, saved us on that first turn. Now we can go ahead and manual. We got the unkillable up, we got the reset. There we go. You can see people are already feeling the pain. Uh, we're gonna start off with this A3 skill here for Bellinor. There goes a cult brawler. Doing what a cult brawler does, which is putting up poisons. Uh, Man Eater goes. And now Rugner's gonna go. We're gonna use that A3 skill. Boom. Slapping so much damage. Uh, A1 here with Painkeeper. Now we need to pay attention. Does Painkeeper take the slow debuff? Painkeeper does, so we're gonna definitely need to manual some stuff. So here we go A2 from Bellinor, keeping those buffs up. Get a little bit of heal there on Man Eater. And Cold Brawler's gonna go. And we're gonna heal up. Oh, we're gonna A1 here with Painkeeper. Now this is going to be an issue because Man Eater is going to take that stun. It's not good for us. That's definitely going to be a problem. So we're going to have to bump up our toughen up our Man Eater smidge. So let me come, let me leave and come back and uh, I'll, I'll try this one more time. Okay, now I fixed it. I got the right champion in there. Everything's groovy. I end up using one of my level 60 Man Eaters, so I don't have to worry really about them staying alive, and should be good. Oh, we got the auto going. All right, all good. I like starting it there. I can fix it real easy. All right, we're gonna get that A3 going for Bellinor to start. Gonna go ahead and use that A1 from a Cult Brawler there. It's A1 from Man Eater. All right, now we're gonna get that Gold Gleam going here. Boom! It's so hard, guys. That's almost 200,000 damage. It's kind of insane, honestly. All right, there we go. The slow did land, so we are gonna have to uh, delay that some. And you can see now, uh, uh, he's the lowest, Rugnor is the lowest HP there, which means that he should uh, be taking that stun every time. And A1 here with Painkeeper. This is how you catch up on Spirit. Uh, stun went to the right spot, that's perfect. Uh, how you catch up on Spirit with the slow debuff. Basically you just use, instead of using the A2 there like we should, we're gonna A1 with Painkeeper until he, she should use her second, she should do the A2 for the second time round. Easiest fix, um, really cures it, makes it nice and easy to get through. The little turn meter boost just puts her back in sync really easy. So there you go, Cold Brawler goes. Here goes Man Eater, boom. 
And you can see, I don't know if you guys saw that little wheel above his head, but it cooled him down, which is something that we want. We're gonna get that turn cooldown again right here. And because priority, A3. Go ahead, man eater. Boom, boom. Hope roller. And Rugnor right here is going to do the gold gleam. It is back available because of all those cooldowns. Should work out just perfect. And here we're going to A1 first. And really, we could click auto right now, but I just want to make I just want to make sure everything works real nice. Um, there we go. Boom, boom. Decrease defense and weaken. Excellent. And there we go. Let's get that heal. There we go. And it works. Just like that, we can click auto and let this bad boy do its thing. And you can see his damage with that A1, 144,000. Now, you do notice the leech is up there. When is the leech not going to be up there? When the stun happens. So everybody's health after that second AoE is going to be static. It's only going to be healed up by Painkeeper. And that's crucial because you can see Rugnar right there did heal off of that leech. He's going to heal right here. Boom. Now he's got a full HP bar. If that was right before the stun, we'd be in a lot of trouble. In fact, it's pretty full right now, which is a bit problematic and concerns me a bit. He didn't take that much damage. Um, so that's going to be, this is where it's going to be interesting. And that's where it fails. So. <sighs> disappointing disappointing i really thought we could make Ragnar work on this but he's not going to be able to guys that's the reality of it right i thought it could it cannot um just heals up too much uh heals up too much hp doesn't take enough damage to wipe him down all the way now if this was turn i don't know turn 12 or something like that wouldn't be an issue right he'll be they'll be wiping him down every single time after the aoe's won't be it won't be a factor there won't be any healing up um but he just didn't take nearly enough damage on that last last time around and so that threw it off and at this point we would die if we continued so that's not gonna work Ragnar's not gonna work hey i'm back so I know I said that Ragnar won't work. I, you guys remember it, I remember it. it was a famous word I said. Um, I just realized, I think he can work. And it's gonna have to do with the skill priorities. Remember how I was saying I wanted to use the Gleam of Avarice right before we were gonna go into the stun, right before the second AoE? Well, I think what we wanna do is we actually wanna use the Thirsty Axe first. And so we're gonna make this happen by making that the prior, the first skill used. Not prioritized, but the first skill used. I, I'm not sure if this is gonna work because with the cooldowns of Painkeeper, like I said, it can really influence where uh, Rugnor takes their turn, where they get their cooldowns happening. But I think this can work. Um, and the reason why is Rugnor on this A1, he doesn't place the leech first and then hit. He hits and then places a leech, so he actually doesn't heal up on that skill. And this is going to allow us, if we use this right before the stun, he won't heal up for the stun, but everybody else on the team should. So we're going to give this a shot, and we're going to see if that makes a difference. Um, because of that as well, I think I'm going to take off this priority for this skill here and not use it. Uh, in fact, we're just going to use the insurmountable skill here for Bellinor. Um, and I don't think we're actually going to use this skill. It doesn't hit super hard. I think this A1 actually hits harder, so we'll take a look at it right now and see. Um, we were doing like, uh, I wanna say, well, you know what, here's what we'll do. We'll keep it up and we'll see when it happens and we can compare the damage between his A3 and his A1. I could be wrong about all that anyway. So let's try this again. I have, I have a good feeling about this. I think this can work really nicely. And the damage he does is just insane. So I really would like this to work. Okay, so get that going, get that going. Now we need to take it off auto here. Okay, so you can go ahead and do your thing, Bellinor. Get that decreased defense and weaken up. It's always nice. Uh, 100K is never bad, right? And here we go. Colt Brawler can do his thing. And now we're gonna start with the A1 here. And did you notice the leech went up, but Rugnor didn't heal at all. That is because places the leech after he hits. Um, that's a really big factor. 
Uh, it's really going to influence where this stun goes. Now, let's go ahead and use the A3 here with Bellinor. Okay, 109 damage. Pretty pretty solid. Pretty solid. Comparable to A2. I'm happy with that for sure. Um, and you can see everybody's kind of healing up a little bit off this. And there goes Painkeeper. Rugnor doesn't take a turn here either. So the only thing is now Rugnor is not, doesn't have enough HP. Uh, this is killing me, guys. Killing me. Okay, basically what I did is I rolled his shield up full and I lift a couple of little flat defenses. So we added, I think, about 200 defense. I'm hopeful this is enough. One of the things that you have to have with your stun targets is at least 15% HP. It's really a little bit more than that, more like 16, but um, he clearly had too little HP in the last go around and so got targeted. So we're gonna try this one more time with the improved defense and HP levels. Well, improved defense levels. HP stay the same. Oh, there we go. Auto. All right, let's just try it. Let's try and get through this to see if we can't survive. Okay, so far so good. So far so great. Now, obviously, this is the issue pretty much only with Spirit because we're not using Painkeeper's A2 here. Um, every other affinity, Painkeeper is going to heal him up, so it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but you know, this should be this should work on everything. So let's try and make it work on everything. All right, there we go. A1. Well, all right, I think he still has enough HP there to qualify, so we'll see. Uh, like I said, the clan boss won't target someone with unkillable. They have less than 15% HP, so we're going to hope this works here. Uh, we shall see. Now, one of the things you can always do is Man Eater does have a decreased attack on his A1. It always helps to put a little accuracy get that decreased attack out, and that means the clan boss will do less damage leading up to this. We had enough HP, that was all we needed, just a little bit more defense to prevent it, so now we are in good shape here. Simple fixes sometimes can do be all the difference. Let's get that decreased defense and weaken out. Boom, boom. Ooh, lots of damage on that. Boom. Get that crit rate up. A1 here with Painkeeper all day, every day. There we go with Cult Brawler, and then Man Eater's gonna put up the Unkillable. Now we're pretty much in sync, just need to get Painkeeper, that little last bit. We're gonna get the cooldown here. Boom, boom, from Bellinor. 100k damage. That's right, we were gonna compare the A3 and the A1 damage-wise, so we'll pay attention to that coming up here. There we go. All right, now we're gonna put that leech out. Watch, no healing here. Hits first, leech goes second. That's how this works. If, I think this should work just great for us now. There we go, got that A1 going. Man-Eater goes. Boom, boom. 120k on that A3 is pretty nice. Call the Cult Brawler. And then Painkeeper with the heal here. Just enough so that Gold Gleam can get targeted. Boom, we are good to go. And look, there's no more Leech out. Perfect, 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 perfect. So it doesn't even need to heal up for this. There we go. 200k, now let's check that A1. 65k, A3 is definitely better. Um, and we can click auto at this point should work just fine. We're gonna pay attention to it Make sure this works just like it should but um, It seems like with the amount of healing we get the amount of cooldowns we get uh, This is working just perfect for us. We're cooling down Rugnor's skill just enough So it still happens on every single cycle. There we go. Got that leech out again It's Perfect, so he puts a leech out clan boss takes his turn now. There's only one turn left He doesn't take a turn because the stun happens now there's zero turns left, so when he comes back and hits, he doesn't heal up. We don't have to worry about who's getting targeted at that point. It works out just fine. And you can see we're consistently having decreased defense and weaken up for the entire fight. Granted, we have Bellinor as well. That definitely makes a, it makes a difference, but uh, we don't have Master Hexer. That's really important. Making sure we don't extend that Leech debuff is pretty crucial, it seems like. Um, it is conceivable that you could get away with it, just looking at the timing of this. Um, but I would just, I would probably recommend not even worrying about that um, and not risking the stun going to the wrong champion than getting a white. Um, but certainly something you can try um, and see how it goes. Uh, but this is a pretty good, pretty good. I like Ragnar a lot. I mean, I, granted, I have him in some of my best gear, right? He's doing 200k hits. But we're seeing the potential of that. Like, when he can drop 180,000, like, that's significant. Um, definitely, definitely helpful. And the fact that he's a Void Champion means that he can be the stun target regardless of affinity. Um, so nice. And that also means that you don't have to worry about 
finding a decreased defense and weakened champion. You can bring in two poisoners if you want. You can bring in a poisoner and a damage dealer. You can bring in two damage dealers. There's a lot of flexibility now to how you want to build your team if you have a Ragnarok and use them in this squad. Um, and this should work regardless of affinity. Um, now, Ultra Nightmare is the one affinity where Leech is not going to be an issue at all. When you're talking about Nightmare, when you're talking about Brutal, uh, just based on the timing of when he uses his skills, that can be a little bit different. So that's definitely something you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, and I cannot vouch for how that's going to work. On Brutal, it should be fine. Very similar type of setup. Um, getting into it might be a little bit of an issue, as it usually is in the beginning of those builds. Um, so that might take some working around uh, with that leech. But uh, Nightmare is the one where it's going to be a little bit more questionable. Um, he takes a turn after the stun and before the stun. And that turn before the stun is where you'd want to put the leech. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, but that turn after the stun, if he heals up too much uh, and doesn't lose it, and the rest of the team doesn't heal up enough, you could be in, it could potentially be problematic. So that's just something you're going to want to be aware of if you try to go that route. Um, but I think it should work just fine on any of those difficulties. And I'd love to hear from you guys. If you try this out, anybody tries this out and tries it on different difficulties, let me know uh, in the in the comments down below how this works. All right, I talked enough. Let's jump to the end so we can kind of see the damage of this. And uh, yeah, we'll show you the last few minutes of this video. Not too bad. I mean, that's a solid two key right there. Very solid 2 key. It's an almost all void team. I really wanted to bring somebody else in, but I didn't really have a. I don't have a lot of like void poison champions. Um, I have, uh, you know, Rowan, but actually going to use her for another video. I should be showing you guys tomorrow or the next day. Uh, you know, using a couple different champions as stun targets. That's going to be my next video. We're going to compare stun targets and see who does the best damage, right? Uh, but Ragnar did 7 million. He did more damage than Bellinor did, which is kind of nuts. Like, their, their, their gear is not that different. He did 7 million damage. That's a crazy amount. Getting two attacks a turn, that's very, very good. Um, he is excellent for this. Absolutely excellent. Now, obviously, a Cold Brawler with the poisons is going to do more damage. But as far as raw damage goes, there's not a lot that are better than Regnor. This is definitely a champion. If you have him and you run this team, you 100% want to use Regnor, I think. I think that's a safe assumption after this video i think we can safely say if you have ragnar and you run the budget and killable you 100 percent want to use him for this um he is fantastic honestly just fantastic so what does this mean uh i mean i, I to me this means that ragnar is one of the best champions for the stun target in a budget and killable teams that we have now ragnar's leech as you can see can be very problematic and the issue is if he takes multiple turns, like the great thing about the budget and kill, he only takes two turns. If he takes more than that, it's going to be really hard to be able to guide the stun to him. He's going to heal up too much just due to his own leech ability. It's going to be very hard to have him be targeted every time. This is why he didn't work in the comp I showed yesterday with Sir Nick. Uh, it won't work with the comp where you're using Sir, uh, Santa or I'm sorry, or Tower. Um, it's going to be very, just very, very difficult to have the stun targeting focus on Rugnor. Um, it's just likely it's going to go somewhere else. He's going to heal up too much. He hits too hard and the leech heals too much for him to be to him to draw the stun based off of his HP level. Now, as always, you can put him in the lead. In a tower team, it probably won't be an issue as long as nobody's weak affinity because they're going to be focusing on the lead champion primarily, especially since everybody else should be full health. But this is something you're going to want to keep in mind. You know, uh, he's not going to work for every composition, but thankfully he does work for this. So uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And you can see how the, the stun priority, I'm sorry, the skill priority can really impact the usage of a champion. This was somebody that we basically didn't use at all. And now I think he's probably one of the best champions for this kind of a clan boss build. And I would also like to add, if you have a double man eater team or a bad eater team or anything, anything like that, Rugnor is going to be amazing for you not only does he get that cool down from uh him losing hp but getting that leech up will help everybody proc those uh retribution procs and you can then use that with rugnor you can use retribution in those teams because he's not a stun target per se everybody's a target in those so he's going to be phenomenal for teams like that somebody i would definitely recommend breaking out of your vault i mean he was doing about 200k per hit and granted you know 
he's really stacked because he's really low speed. I didn't have to worry about the speed. But if you can get him with the speed, he's obviously going to hit really hard. And for an epic champion, that's not easy to find. So definitely somebody I would uh, look at breaking out for some of your teams out there, especially if you need to decrease defense and weaken champ. It's a great one. Definitely a good one. So that's all we have for today. I hope this was enjoyable for you. Hit that like, subscribe, please. Appreciate it. Again, Patreon links are down below. Soundstripe link as well if you like that music that we played. And, uh, yeah, that's it. We failed. We succeeded. We failed. We succeeded again. It was fun. This is a good time had by all. So hopefully you guys had a good time too. Until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.